So Javi asked me if I was ready. I guess I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Today, we're gonna to talk about fine tuning your assemblage pieces. We've done a lot about assemblage, and you might think by now, hey, I got it down, I can do this. But there really are little things that you may never have thought about that will just make your work a whole lot better. And I know it's stuff that I've found along the way. For example, this necklace that I made that I'm wearing, I made for this month's challenge on the Bisou Boutique's creative group where we're doing metallic, pearl, and crystal. And there's a lot of that in this piece. But as I went to put it on so that I could display it in the video, I saw some little bitty things that need a little work yet. And I thought, that would be good to share with you folks today. That would help you. I also have another piece over here that's half done. We're going to finish it together. We're not going to put the neckline treatment on probably because it may be too wet. But we may suggest some. And I'm going to show you some new pieces that came in that will give your work some flow and movement and maybe make it a little bit easier. So... Like I always say, get on over here, let's get to it, because it's all about the work and making your work something people want to buy. Finished, complete, well done as artists. So, mine over and I'll show you what I found out. Hi guys, you know I want to explain to you too, it's that time of year again where we're kind of busy. And Jordan is last minute today on getting your orders out. And so you're going to hear some ripping tape and some computer noise from him printing labels. And there's nothing to be done about it. It's just the way it is. So just feel like you've stepped in to visit us today. It's only for a minute. Yeah. He <laughs> just hollers, it's only for a minute. So we couldn't wait any longer today to make this because it takes a long time to process and edit these. And Javi wants to get out of here before too late because probably waiting for her because it's Friday night date night, you know, so anyway <laughs> She's just looking <laughs> like yeah, you better get me out of here on time Anyway, I've got the necklace laid down in person And because the camera is a little wonky yet, we're working on getting a new Oh, that that helped a lot. I spumped it with an E <sighs> We will have a better camera soon, I hope, but anyway for now, I'm going to bring this to you instead of her zooming. And you can see the way this has been done. We're working in the challenge this week at the Bisou Boutiques group at Facebook. And we do hope you'll join us. You know, if you like mixed media and assemblage, that's the place to be. Whether you're new or just interested or uh, very advanced, it's a good place for you. And as you can see, this is built on the crescent base. This is one I actually signed a year ago and didn't, didn't use. So um, it's got the wrong date for this year. As you can see I've got some cleanup. You see some glue globs? Not too many. This will just pick right off. But I do want to mention to you that when you're doing this kind of work, when you're done, that piece gets flipped over and you look for things like that. And if you're not able to cover them entirely or pick all your glue strings off or some of your gloves, then sometimes there's a little trick where you can actually paint over the back with a light coat spritzing of white primer paint. And that seems to help. Um, but the best thing to do is to be able to clean it off. And you can pick it off with a needle nose tweezers. Okay, so let's get back to the front. There's a lot of bling in here. I have a lot of old earrings and buttons in here. This is a great big piece. I think it was actually a little brooch that I wanted to use for an asymmetrical focal. I have actually in this piece two asymmetrical focals. Can you pick them out? Think about it. What might they be? Of course this one and then this one. Okay, which is a big pearl. And these pearls are from our vintage pearl stash that you can buy at bisuboutiques.com. All of the basic findings are available there. 
and we have them in big bags of all different sizes, big ones to little ones that are perfect for assemblage. For only, I think, they're under $7 a bag. You get a lot. You make a bunch of stuff with them. So we've used them a lot in these pieces, along with the old um, earrings and the old crystals and so forth. But there are problems yet with this piece. What might they be? Well, I've got some glue strings in here. Before you photograph your jewelry, be sure that you pick them off. Some of them are easier to get than others, but I will tell you what, your camera will not lie. If you got glue globs or glue strings in your assemblage work, it will pick it up real quick. And people don't buy work that's messy. Not usually anyway. So you want to be sure they're off. I'm going to lay this down gently now so that I can work on it. What else is wrong with this? There's some mess in here that needs to be cleaned up down in here. Easily done. A little thing you can do is you can get some goo gone, which you can get in any hardware store or discount store on a swab Q-tip and get down in there and then it'll lift right off. Okay, but be careful not to get it like oozing down into the back of your pieces. So it'll make your pieces all lift off. Just an itty bit is all you want. Another issue that I have with this piece, and I'm not sure is an issue yet. I have to think on this a while. See, I'm just keep seeing strings. That's got to go. No, 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 no. Um, with this focal to this side, you might have noticed when I had it on, this side comes down a little bit more than this side. Now that can be okay. That's asymmetrical. It doesn't have to be completely even on both sides. But I'm not sure that I'm real crazy about not having a little bit more in here. I don't know yet. And how might I do that? I don't know. I might have to cut a filigree in half and somehow lift these pieces and try to insert it and then put some hanging things and in that case it would be a little longer on this side yet and you do have issues sometimes you keep adding to a piece until you've wrapped it so you don't want to do that um, but that might provide some eye interest and in flow and movement that's one solution or the other would be to just leave the thing alone because this is a big piece and it draws the eye so it doesn't have to have the same flow as this, piece, this side. Not really. It's something that you have to think about and consider. Another thing that I might work on a little bit more is you'll see how... I'm going to move it. I've come almost up to the edge so I can get my jump rings through. I... Unless you've painted this piece and sometimes uh, you can have issues when you paint a crescent and then you add things to it sometimes the glue will want to adhere to the paint rather than the metal and when that happens you don't get a good bond and you don't get an enduring piece so I am not super crazy about paint over a crescent that you're going to add something to now Commercial plating, like our brass ox ones, our silverware ones, our rusty black ones when we have them, it's not a problem. It will stay. But somehow the paint is just too thin, too porous, too something, and it, it the glue may want to grab that and not go through to the metal, and then you don't have a good bond. So you have to be cautious of that. But what I could do is I could take a little paint and go, like some silver paint on a tiny brush, and go right around here. Some silver gilders would be good. To cover that up. Cover that up here. Because it's really too small for me to really add anything there. I could maybe do a little bit of rhinestone chain. 
but I'd probably have to add it bit by bit, but that would be okay. On the other hand, it may be a little weak and come off. So you don't want that. So possibly a little gilders might be a good solution for that. I could leave it. I've got brass socks. I've got gold in here. A little of that showing is not bad. I just don't... This is me personally. Who says? You know, but um, I don't like to see a lot of that back showing. I want to see a cover. If you're going to do an assemblage, cover it. That's, that's my feeling. Um, you do what you want. Um, another thing is... I, look, I, I like pretty much how it's ended up under here. It seems filled out pretty well. But when I turn it this way, I like it to be very complete. So up in here, up in here and here, up under here. I hope you can see that. Am I moving it out of the way? Right up. Is that showing up, Javi? Right up in here. Something should be added to cover so that it comes all the way out. Something that is not always a very good idea in assembly is when you use leaves to accomplish that. If you have them sticking up too high, like sometimes um, I'll see in assembly, I'm going to use this for an example. And um, people will use, say, this leaf, and they'll have it sticking up like this. Or this piece will be way up to where... Ah, there's sometimes that works, but pointy things, like this leaf. This doesn't belong up this high. Because what will happen is it will gouge people in the neck. Unless you make it really long. In that case, that might be all right. But really, these should not be up this high. They should be no higher than this, to my mind. Now, there's an exception. Say you want to add a cameo, and I have one here. We're going to work on it together. That would be okay because the way that you would connect this and that, this is there's no sharp part. It's not going to gouge anybody in the neck, okay? These sharp leaves they just, just don't look good sticking up too high. That's a tip from me, okay? This silverware piece here is not something we carry very often. I have them right now for this time of year, and I have them in low stock. And they are, let's see, did she write it down here? Neck base. Base 01669. I think that's a six. This is a silverware neck base. We don't have the real big one. We have this one. And don't gag when you see the price. <laughs> the reason why it's much more than the brass ox and the raw ones is because silverware plating is fine silver, 99.9% .9 pure silver in the back. Trying to talk over Jordan's ripping tape. I only got one more. I only got one more. Okay, he promises. It's probably Rini's. <laughs> Rini's are Marcia's today. How'd you know? Anyway. <laughs> okay, girls, he's packing your box. Um, anyway, these are more expensive because the plating, this is a heavy piece, and plating goes by weight. And so, yeah, I think they're, I think they're $7.95. But, you know, they're so wonderful. Get them while I got them, and I don't have many. So, you know, when you see these pieces, it's not something I'm going to have a lot because they cost me a lot of money to invest into, but they really such a work part, and I'm going to show you how. But one last thing I did want to mention. Do you see? This is the chain we worked on last time. Remember the piece chain that we did with the bits of uh, book chain and the bits of the bead and link chain that we had lying about? Here it is, and it's got an extender on it, too, so you can make it longer. And here's another tip. Do you see how I bent this? This is a cool part. I'm going to show it to you here. I started getting these some time ago because Robin um, from Lulu's Box asked me if I could find them for her. And when I saw them, I'm like, okay, there's a cute, but what am I going to do? And I realized they're really cool coming out of a coffee cup to make steam. Cherie Barnes did that. Much time, something like that is nifty. That is, that's smart. 
but they add a lot of movement in an assemblage and you can see how I've used them here. I bent this one across the pearl and they are quite malleable. Um, I'm going to use my pliers here and show you how I did it. I just coaxed it with my fingers. And that's most of it. Any of these parts, just coax them with your fingers and a chain those pliers and you'll get them to do what you want them to do. And that's how I kind of made that little bridge for that. I thought that might give it more movement and depth. But, you know, I can flatten this back out too easily. So, it's no big deal. They're pretty sturdy. And we have these in the silverware now. Let's see if Shelly wrote this down for me. I think it's S-I-L-W-A-R-0-1-7-1-4. Can you hear me over the tape? S-I-L-W-A-R-0-1-7-1-4. It's a swirl drop. They come in pairs. I think for 250. Make a nice pair of earrings too because they come in um, opposing left and right. So you can use them like that or you can use them for either side of an assemblage. So there you go. So I'm going to continue to work on this piece and then we're going to work on another one together which I'm going to bring over to this edge show you a few things about it. I've got it mostly done. I don't have the neckline treatment on yet. Is that showing up good, Javi? Is this good? It's not a really great place to work on it because I, whoops, I don't want to bump that again. It, I don't have any uh, protection under it, but I try to not get glue on here. I'm going to just kind of explain to you what I've done so far. This is one of our cameos that I've sent, set in a mount like this one. And I did it upside down. And I did it that way for a reason. Because I wanted to make use of this pendant hook at the bottom to hang something. This one's been antiqued. I used burnt umber and black acrylic paint wiped back. And then I hid it with satin lacquer, Krylon satin lacquer. So it's not quite a gloss and not a matte. Okay, and that's why we kind of have this slight sheen to it. But she looks so pretty and she has so much more depth than this piece, which the woman basically looks like a ghost and she needs to get some color. So before I would do this piece, I would get some color on that. I, I really like to put the color on the, the cameos. I think. It just adds so much to it. Anyway, uh, I use this piece, this this base, which again is base B A S E O one six six nine while they last. I think we have thirteen or fourteen in stock, and that's it. But the, they're a little bit spendy. Worth your money though. Uh, this mount the lady set in. You can use it this way, you know, or this way. It is Mount 030 in silver. Okay? So you'll be able to find that. Another element that I like to use in the collages is this piece, which is a five leaf sprig. And it is LF44 in the silver. We carry this in practically every color there is, including raw. The raw is awesome because you can <coughs> make it any color you want. The Vintage Pearl Pack, in case you guys might be looking for it, is PRL05637. And also, um, I have been using a lot in these collages, although I did in this one. I use it in the other one. Is the Vintage um, vintage Look Rhinestone Cup Chain. It isn't vintage. It's New Czech Preciosa. Uh, the Crystal AB is CHN01466, and we have plenty of it. And we also have the crystal, and it's set in raw brass, so you can colorize it if you want, the background. Um, it's two millimeter, so it's very flexible. I find that the bigger sizes just look chunky and incomplete in assemblage. So I like two millimeter, so that's why I carry those. And if I were to expand into colors, it would probably all be two millimeter at this point in time, till I get another design set. Anyway, let's finish this piece together. There's not a lot that needs to be done. I've used my cameo, I've used my mount. I hung one of my silverware lace edge uh, 
hearts, which you'll find in the silverware hearts section. I sell a lot of these. I use a lot of these. I use a lot of the swirl things, which again is um, silverware 01714. I use some of the, the pearls out of the pearl pack that we carry. And I use some vintage buttons. Now, why did I do that? Why did I use those vintage buttons? It's because it builds it up so that I can get the pieces on that I want so that they have the right dimension. Okay? I have a, an old uh, vintage button in here. So basically what I'd have to do is just get some stuff over here and finish setting some stones. So that's what I'm going to do. So I've already decided pretty much what I'm going to do, guys. And it's pretty simple. I am going to make use of this little music charm, which you'll find in our charm section. If I put it here, if you can see it better, it's just a G clef with some notes. And the reason I, I want to use that as a motif is because in the video, the girl's got a bird in her hand, I believe. It's kind of hard to see. So I thought, you know, like the music of a songbird. I like to um, build a little meaning into my pieces. I know this one doesn't really have meaning. This is more of a fashion piece. But for me, I have found that a little trick to get your jewelry to sell better is sometimes if you give people a reason to buy it. Now, the reason to buy this one would be because, would be because a woman wanted a dramatic piece for maybe a holiday dress. Or even a bridal dress. That would be the reason. Okay. Um, it's still moving around a little bit because it's a little wet. Um, this one, the reason someone would buy it would be uh, several retaining. It could be a piece for someone who loves cameos. It could be a piece for someone who loves music. A lot of reasons that we've given people to buy this. I also set one of our pretty bisque roses in it. So I'm going to take my glue and I'm going to add a leaf. And I don't have the number of this leaf, but we just loaded them, or she's about to load them. We got 17 pounds of silverware yesterday. And Shelly has been valiantly, along with Donna, up there counting and loading. But I'm going to put this piece right here, leaving just enough room there at the end, you see. Just, uh, let me get my finger out of there. See the hole? You never want to close this up over the hole. Now what's nice is because this is all the same metal color, I don't have to worry if a little bit's exposed. But I don't like to see raw brass exposed because it'll age in time unless you seal it or paint it. So I like to see it covered if you have any exposed and yet be careful painting, you know, over, over uh, collaging or assembling over paint for the reason I explained earlier. Okay, so I got some glue on that and I've set that down. This is going to be so easy to finish. And then I'm going to take and I'm going to cut this hanging hole off the top of this piece and I'm doing it away from Javi so it will not be a projectile missile going her way. That's just a kindness. <laughs> Javi says, thanks. She's half asleep over there. <laughs> Javi's coming. She says she's coming to the workshop. You're going to come to the workshop? Yeah. Yeah. The workshop is May 15th to 17th, and it's going to be in Columbia, Ohio again. We have room for 40 people, and I've got dips for about 23 already. So um, that doesn't mean they're coming for sure. That just means they're intensely interested, and I'm to contact them first. So <laughs> Anyway, uh, if you're interested in, in being part of our retreat this year, we're going to have a day of... Clay Play with Katie Oskin of Cater's Acres. I've just filed that top off. And uh, the rest of it, I'm actually going to teach. And Marsha and Rini are going to teach a little class from a kit that they've made. Kate Mulligan is going to assist me in the responsible repurposing class. And we, oh, I think Cindy Peterson from Howling Dog has a project for us too. So we are going to have a ball. I just put a little glue on the back of that, guys. And now my songbird has a song to sing. La, 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 la. What should it be? I think in that song, that old song. 
Minnie Ripper, Minnie Ripper in the song. Now I'm showing my age, which I could never sing that song because she sang so high. I believe poor Minnie passed away. Anyway, she sang pretty. Okay, so I've got my songbird song there. I think maybe I like that a little straighter. I'm gonna have a little blue clue up, blue clean up. I see. And I also have a little space because this didn't go down flat. So we're going to deal with that together today. Just to show you, this is the fine tuning stuff. See, I have this on an angle from the way I would work, so it's not... Okay. Now this is up a little higher than I'd like it to be on a neckline. I just really don't like to see... Um, Leaves up too high. Aha, that's better. That's better. Okay. So now what's left for me to do is fill these spots in. So we'll do that together. And I'll just kind of yak along at you as we do. I think um, we can be thinking about this too while I'm doing that. I think for my finish, I'm going to use this beautiful silver bead and link chain. And normally I would go a little heavier maybe with some beads on this, but this chain is so ornate and this design's kind of delicate. I think will be enough and then maybe I'll hang a few little, you know, how I like to put a few little pearls off the edge there. So when I get this all finished up, I'm be, I'll be blogging about it and I will share that with you. Okay, so now I'm just going to set a few little pearlies, heather, thither, and yawn. And we'll be done with the motif. And all that will remain is I'll have to sign it, which I can do it after it's dry. I would have been better if I'd signed it before I started to collage it, but hey, I, I can do it. Do what's best for you. You should sign your work. And by the way, while I've got your attention, another thing you ought to be doing if you are an artist who looks forward to being uh, doing this for a living or really supplementing your living well feeding your passion and having success at it something that you need to be doing if you aren't if you are good for you is you ought to be blogging are you blogging yet if somebody I read something somewhere that says the blogging's dead that is not true that is not true not for artists and one of the best things about blogging as an artist is that when people buy your work, they are buying a little piece of you. Did you know that? It's rare that someone's going to buy your work if they don't like you. If there's some kind of vibe that, they, that you put out that is not likable, um, your sales are going to suffer. So the more that you can share with them about your journey and the more that you can share with them about your life, the more they're going to know you, the more they're going to be drawn to you and to your work. You know, it's always good to do blog posts that talk about your process and maybe uh, share a tutorial with somebody. That's always excellent. But, you know, if you look at my blog, I talk a lot about other people. I don't think I'm all that interesting, honestly. I think a lot of the people who have been drawn to join the Bisu Boutique's creative group are far more talented and far more interesting than I am. And I like to write about them. But I also like to write about my family, like you've probably seen any number of blogs about Javi and how she was learning to be an artist because she's quite a good wear artist, did you know that? And not bad with polymer clay either. Um, you probably see me blog about my son Jordan and how we started this business together when he wasn't even two. And yes, we did start together. He was my companion then, and he's my companion now. And it's it's a it's such a blessing and such a special thing to have him as such a close part of my life and with me all the time. And he's as interested in your progress as I am, and that's why he takes care of the customer service here. 
and makes things go as smooth as he can for you in receiving your orders because we really care here. We really do. Um, before too long on these videos, after the first the year, you're going to see something real different. Um, my mother is going to teach you some of my great-grandmother's recipes, and we're going to have some cooking videos. How about that? Just as a break, because um, my family history is kind of interesting. And I think you're going to enjoy our family stories. And we have family artifacts, things that belong to my great-grandmothers. On the one side, they were Amish. On the other side, they were Dunkers. And uh, quite, quite some stories there to tell you about that. And none of us are any of that now. <laughs> but um, it's, it's quite a tale how that all came about and my grandmother's boarding house and she was such a great bread baker and she made wonderful pies and so my mother's going to come on and she's going to teach you my great grandmother's pie recipe which you are going to love knowing everybody wants another pie recipe I think so we're going to be changing some things up once in a while, just for a break. This is going to be mostly about jewelry, always was, always will be. But we're going to be sharing some things about our journey and our lives with you. And that is something you should be doing on your blogs. And if you video, the same thing. You know, don't let it just be all about, oh, here's my artistic process. You know, that's, that's wonderful. We want to know that. People tune into these videos mostly for that because they want to learn. But after a while, after they've seen 130 of these videos, they may want to know who is this crazy woman and where did she come from? And why hasn't she written a book? Why don't I see her at the bookstore? There's a lot of reasons for that. Maybe she doesn't want to do that. Maybe she does. Don't know. I kind of think video is my thing. And I don't want to not have time for people because we love our gems and our jewels and we love to make them, but the real jewels are people. And I never want to lose track of that. Okay, I'm going to set this last thing here. And you know what this is I'm setting? I should show this to you again. I know I've showed it to you before. This is called a crystal monte. Let me get the cap on this. I think I brought them all down. I may go back and refine this again when I go to put the chain on. But you can see what this is going to look like. And I think it's kind of pretty. And you know what? Of these two, I think this one will sell first. I do. I think this will sell. We'll find out. Maybe they'll both languish there for a while. I don't know. But I have jewelry on my, excuse me, on my website now too. And you can come there and buy yourself a piece that was made in video. These two will be there as soon as they're dry and finished and cured. Okay, Rosemont tea. I don't know if Javi can get up on that or not. Does that show? Do you see the little X in there, guys? This is a silver-plated tin mount. Made in United... No, no, these are Czech. I'm lying. These are Czech. And, uh, there's a little flat back stone in there. These are three millimeter, I think. I think. Maybe they're four. I have to measure them. Anyway, you can wire through that. Miriam Haskell jewelry had Rosemont tees all over the place, wired in. These are a wonderful thing to have. They're a piece of design history. I usually, like as not, will glue them into something now, but I have wired them many times, and it's something I'll never be without, and you don't have to be without them either because we carry them. They're called crystal... Montes. M M T E E S. Is that what you got on the door? Crystal Montes. We'll look that up again. But we have them. So you can get them from us, and they're reasonable. And they make a nice accent because uh, it's a little stone that's mounted. So, you know, if you were doing this all on wire, you, you could. You know what? I think I'll put that right there since I have it. What did I do with my glue? Here it is. I closed it up already. Okay. I still got it in my. Clutches, I might as well go ahead and do something with it. Okay, I'm going to stick it right there. All right, so what what is left to do here is some cleanup. And to add the chain, 
maybe a little pearl at the end for finial. I always build in an extender. That's the selling point. Say that you're going for a 20 inch neckline, which 20 to 22 on an assemblage is good. Even for people with smaller necks, you don't want something like this jammed right up against somebody's neck. That doesn't look good. So if you were doing 18, you'd want to make an extender for at least a 22. You'll sell it to more people. Or when you go to sell it, always offer to put one on if you haven't already. Always. Because then they'll realize, hey, you know, we can make this to fit you and it's going to be fine. So that's what I have to share with you today. I hope you enjoy doing some bling assemblage. I hope you will come to the Bisu Boutique's creative group at Facebook and join us for this challenge. It is the last challenge of the year. The next one will be our three-month challenge, which is build a line, and that's going to be a master class on how to refine your process and make a grouping of things that speaks your name artistically and gives people a reason to buy it. Very, very interesting that's coming up. But for this month, we're doing bling. So have some fun. Make it bling alicious. We've got plenty of it for you at BeastsBoutiques.com. Please visit us. We love it when you patronize it. It helps us to be able to make these videos and buy another stupid camera. Jeez. Javi's got it picked out already. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. I hope you will whip some stuff out and try this for yourself. And again, once again, when you use E6000, the glue of choice, keep it off your fingers the best you can. Do not eat. Uh, if you're drinking something, put it in a closed container and clean up really good afterwards because it is the best glue in the world, but it's toxic. Okay? So that's my advice to you. It's okay to use if you're careful. Have a wonderful day. We love you. We'll see you next time.